everyone, and welcome to another episode of It's News to Me. I'm your host, Paola Mendez. Today we'll be highlighting the important news and events happening worldwide, nationwide, and right here in our community. The Batavia election results are in. Mayor Jeff Schelke was re-elected for his 10th consecutive term. He was first mayor at the age of 32 in 1980. Over the past 36 years of his tenure, Batavia's population has doubled. Congratulations, Mayor Schelke. Also victorious in the election is Scott Salvati for Alderman of the first ward. Robert Batty Barr, Tina Bleakley, Susan Locke, and Jonathan Gasper were also, select, were also elected to the Batavia School Board. Congratulations to all the winners. Here's Check It Out with Michelle Martzell. Hello, I'm Michelle Martzell, Promotional Services Manager here at Batavia Public Library. National Library Week is April 9th through 15th. This year's theme is Libraries Transform. Has Batavia Public Library helped you transform your life in any way? Has any public or school library helped? We'd like to know. Stop by the library and write us a note. There will be paper and pens in a box in which to place your note near the checkout desk beginning April 9th. Or you can comment on the library's Facebook page or write to us at Ask Us at BataviaPublicLibrary.org. We appreciate your comments. If you plan to visit Main Street Batavia's Egg Hop down at the Riverwalk on Saturday, April 15th, stop by the Band Shell at the Peg Bond Center at 10.30 a.m. for a spring story time presented by the library. The library will be closed on Easter Sunday, April 16th. Young children and their parents are invited to a special program, Miss Carol's Macaroni Soup, on Monday, April 17th at 10 a.m. This interactive program includes kid-friendly songs and will encourage the kids to dance and move about throughout the show. It's a day off from school, so the older siblings can come as well. Registration is not required. Doors to the Founders Room will open at 9.45 a.m. Please join us for Books Between Bites at 12 noon on Thursday, April 20th, when Chicago Tribune columnist Rick Kogan returns to the library to share personal stories about the legendary Chicagoans he has met. Feel free to bring your lunch or stop in Chapters Cafe to pick up something to eat or drink before the program begins and please visit the library's online calendar to find additional programs for children, teens, and adults, as well as a schedule of computer classes for adults. I'm Michelle Martzell, and I hope to see you at the library. A New Jersey teen will soon have to make a decision that many high school seniors dream of making, deciding where to attend college with a choice between all eight Ivy League schools in the United States. Yes, all eight. Ifeoma Whitethorpe said she was shaking when the eighth letter arrived. Whitethorpe, a senior and student government president at Morris Hills High School in Rockaway, New Jersey, has to make a choice between Harvard, Yale, Cornell, Columbia, the University of Pennsylvania, Princeton, Dartmouth, and Brown. She wants to study biology and pursue a career in global health. Since all of the Ivy League schools have great research facilities, she chose to apply to all of them. She also added another potential elite choice when she was accepted to Stanford as well. On Tuesday, April 4th, dozens were killed and hundreds remain injured from suspected chemical gas attacks in the rebel-held city of Khan Shaikhoun, Syria. The attack has been called the largest in Syrian history and occurred via airstrikes in the morning, reportedly of a poisonous gas. The attack, which has been blamed on the Syrian regime by activists and condemned by international leaders, has even led, left doctors in shock. Local doctors said that many of the casualties came as a result of asphyxiation. One doctor told CNN he's never, he's never seen anything like it beyond description. He estimated there were around 400, five, excuse me, 500 wounded people, covering all spaces in the hospital where he was working at the time. The scene of the attacks was described by many as complete chaos, some suffering, others dying instantly. 
The Aleppo Media Center put the death toll at 70, but the confusion on the ground has, held, has led to conflicting numbers. UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said at least 58 were dead, including 10 children, while the High Negotiations Committee, an umbrella opposition group, claimed the death toll could be as high as 100. Now let's go to the board brief. Hello, my name is Ann Panessa, and I'm the principal of H.C. Storm Elementary School here in Batavia. And I'd like to share with you about our Bridges program. This is a new reading initiative that was started this year in conjunction with the Homestead Senior Living Community right around the corner from us. We knew there were valuable members of the community there that might be available to help our youngest readers as they're starting out. By having these residents come and visit our school, we're able to provide our students with some one-on-one -on -one reading time that they can really benefit from. The seniors have been a great addition to our team here at STORM. They come every Friday morning like clockwork, 10 o'clock, the bus pulls up and they come in. Initially, they were trained by our reading specialist and have worked closely with our teachers on the materials they'll be using with the students and how to ask the students questions, how to pause, and how to practice those important early reading strategies. The volunteers have done a great job. They always walk in with a smile on their face, full of energy, ready to be here, and the kids light up when they see them, knowing they're going to work with the special adult and have that practice opportunity to really develop as young readers. It's a wonderful program. We're so thankful to have these members of the community giving their time and coming in to make a difference for our students. And we're very, very pleased that it's going so well. We'll definitely look to have this program again next year, hopefully expand and add some new volunteers into that program. And we called it Bridges because we are bridging between two different generations, our valued seniors and some of our youngest learners here in the community, as well as two community centers. So it's going very well. We're, it, we think it's a win-win situation. We definitely um, get a lot from our volunteers and hopefully they gain as well from being here and being around these young, enthusiastic learners. Thank you. The 2017 season for the World Series Cubs began on Sunday, April 2nd against the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cubs lost on Sunday's game, 4-3. to three. They redeemed themselves on Tuesday with a score of 2-1. to one. Their first home game at Wrigley Field will be April 10th against the LA Dodgers. In the afternoon of Monday, April 3rd, a terrorist attack occurred in the city of St. Petersburg in Russia. A 22-year-old suicide bomber from the Central Asian Republic of Kyrgyzstan caused tragedy in a metro station. Ten people were pronounced dead on the scene, and another four died after the incident. The train driver, Alexander Kaverin, has been praised by many in Russia for making the decision to continue to the next station after the blast for a safer ev evacuation. A second bomb was found and defused by authorities in the second metro station. According to DNA tests, the second bomb was connected to the suicide bomber. Let's head to the park bench with Sharon. Hello, I'm Sharon Bringelson, Marketing and Communications Coordinator at the Park District, and welcome to the park bench. I am bringing you Park District news today from Shannon Hall. We have some really great events coming up this spring. Join the Batavia Park District for One World, One Breath, World Tai Chi and Qigong Day, Saturday, April 29th. At 10 a.m. local time, people all over the world will practice and share the beauty and benefits of Tai Chi and Qigong to encourage health and healing and to recognize and celebrate our common humanity. All are welcome and no experience is necessary. Participants will learn Tai Chi breathing and movement. Children under 14 should be accompanied by an adult. Please register with the Batavia Park District by calling 630-879-5235. There is no fee for this event, and participants are asked to donate items for the Batavia Interfaith Food Pantry. It's all happening right here at Shannon Hall. 
We are look, all looking forward to picnics, barbecues, and outdoor activities in the parks. And spring is the time to book your park pavilion rentals. That's right, we have many opportunities for you and your family to plan your celebration or event in one of our pavilions. Our parks and shelters are perfect for family reunions, get-togethers, picnics, and more. All pavilions are on a first-come, first-served basis, and rentals start at $45 to $55. Extra amenities, like electricity and water, may be arranged for an additional charge. By the way, this beautiful facility is also available for rental and is a popular place for weddings and parties. For more information or to book your date for any of our locations, please reach out to our facility supervisor, Becca Atkins, at 630-406-5282, extension 2062. There are only two more tween nights scheduled this spring. On Friday nights, the Batavia Park District hosts an exciting evening of fun for fifth and sixth graders that they won't want to miss. They can enjoy games, sports, music, movies, dancing, food, and more. This is a great opportunity to hang out with old friends and meet new kids from other schools, all while in a safe environment. Concessions are available for an additional fee. You can check it all out on April 21st and May 9th at the Eastside Community Center at 6 p.m. And there is a $5 admission fee. Looking forward to the warmer weather of summer, tween nights in June and July will be held at Hall Quarry Beach. For the upcoming tween night dates, visit bataviaparks.org. We'll see you next time for more Park District news coming up later this spring. That's all we have for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. Most of our programming is viewable online at mybatv.com or on YouTube under the username BATV1017. Be sure to like our Facebook page to stay up to date on the station's current happenings. Thanks again for watching. I'm Paola Mendez, and that's News to Me. Hey, that's News to Me!